Good morning, Holy Sacrament. And good morning to all our guests. This is the dawn of a new Christian year. The year begins with Advent. And we are about to embark upon a brand new hope, a new hope in Christ Jesus. The year begins with the season of Advent. Advent is the precursor for Christmas and Epiphany. You know, we only have but two seasons with beginnings and endings. And so this season, this joyful season of expectation begins with a prayer, with a long, long prayer and litany. So if you are able, stand. And if you prefer, kneel during this long litany, the great litany where we petition God to give us a new life, a new hope in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O oh God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O oh God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed, with thy most precious blood, and by the mercy, preserve us forever. Spare, Spare us, good Lord. Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride and vain glory and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by the cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, 
in our hour of death and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, hear us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thine holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to send both laborers into thy harvest and to draw all humankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and been and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice, love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all humankind. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. That it may please thee 
to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endure us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us once more. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us once more. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of all the saints we may attain thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. tradition that symbolizes the passage of four weeks of Advent in the liturgical calendar of the Western Church. It is traditionally a Lutheran practice. It is an evergreen wreath with four candles, sometimes a fifth white candle in the center. Beginning at the first Sunday of Advent, the lighting of a candle can be accompanied by a Bible reading, devotional time, and prayers. An additional candle is lit on each subsequent Sunday until by the last Sunday of Advent. All four candles are lit. Some Advent wreaths conclude a fifth Christ candle, which is lit at Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Advent wreaths are circular, representing God's infinite love, and are usually made of evergreen leaves, which represent the hope of eternal life bought by Jesus Christ. Within the Advent wreath are candles that generally represent the four weeks of Advent season as well as the light of God coming into the world 
through the birth of Jesus Christ. Although each of the candles can be attributed its own significance as well, in one version of such interpretation, the, the candles specifically symbolize the Christian concepts of hope, week one, peace, week two, joy, week three, and love, week four. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hello, I'm Haley Sanwa. And I'm Marcus Sanwa. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm chapter 80, verses 1 through 7, and verses 16 through 18. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You who led Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Messiah. Stir up your might. And come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. O, Lo o Lord God of hosts. How long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears. And given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your contents. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Thank you. The Epistle 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in spiritual gifts as you were from the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The epistle...
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. You do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, Keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Coming. Prepare ye the way. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Look around. We have only to look around us to see something new is happening. The newness, even of the colors. I think the angels have been here to put blue everywhere. Blue with candles. Well, the altar guild are some of our messengers, some of our angels. We give thanks to God for them. and We especially give thanks to God for those whose gifts and talents help us to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are blessed to have among us those who can make chasubles and frontals and linens, even Kathy Burnberry. We give thanks to God for all the work that she has done to help us to prepare to focus on Christ, to know that Christ is coming, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Last Sunday also, in um, confirmation class, which happens, oops, almost lost my math, which happens at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, on Sunday afternoon, after service, our catechists, that is, those who teach catechism, even Kathy and Marilyn, help the children who are getting ready for confirmation. And we have a dozen youth preparing for confirmation. That'll happen sometime next year, early next year, we expect. 
The children are getting ready for confirmation and preparing, and what they did was each child went out and bought all of what they need for an Advent wreath. They needed four candles for the periphery of the circle, that circle that means everlasting life. And they purchase greenery, greenery that tells us Christ goes on. Your relationship with Christ Jesus goes on forever and ever, ever green. And they purchased the center candle, the Christ candle, which is expected to be lit on Christmas Eve. And each child in their own homes on the Zoom prepared an Advent wreath. It's something you might choose to do at home as you prepare ye the way of the Lord, as you prepare your heart and mind and have a place for your devotions daily for 28 days so that you might walk the walk, walking the journey, preparing your heart and mind for the Lord Jesus Christ. We begin by preparing for the Christ child. And often, when we think of Christ is coming, prepare the way, we think in terms of the baby. But today's gospel lesson points us to that second coming, that time that, the, that, that, that those sang about long ago, even as the slaves sang, better be ready. Oh, not supposed to sing. Better be ready. Better be ready. Better be ready. Ready to put on your long white robe. The long white robes were put on at baptism. And you've already put on those long white robes. Even as babies are baptized, they have on a long white robe. And even as those who are baptized standing in a pool are dunked, but they are wearing the long white robe. And even as those lay Eucharistic ministers are wearing long white robes, and we are told in Revelations that those surrounding the throne are in white. Better be ready says today's scripture, ready to put on your long white robe. But what is this preparation? What are we getting ready for? Ready on our hearts and our minds, making room, make room. Sometimes during the Christmas season, we see our homes and we say, oh, that's got to move for the tree and that's got to move for the wreath and we've got all these preparations and you got to, oh, when you move the furniture, you see, whoops, something fell back there a while back and you got to dust that up. Cleaning, preparing, it's something we have to do for our hearts as well. This first Advent candle, we were told, symbolizes hope. There is hope. There is hope for a people who are suffering with COVID. There is hope for a country, even after an election, still divided. There is hope for those whose homes are ravaged with anger and arguments. There is hope. There's hope for a community where you can't sit on your front porch without somebody driving by to shoot. There is hope. And there's hope for you and me. But this hope is not a stagnant hope. It's not a hope where you just sit still and fold your hands and wait for the baby to come. No, the expectancy, the pregnancy demands that you prepare. You have to prepare the place where the child will be. You have to prepare for the clothing for the child. You have to prepare your heart and your mind. you got to be adjusted because you will be awakened in the middle of the night. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. That first candle symbolizes hope. Yes, and it symbolizes our appreciation, that A, that Alpha, that Advent Alpha, number one, appreciation of one another, 
I certainly appreciate the team that puts, that, that works so hard to bring us together in communion and in community each Sunday. It takes every single one, everyone. And those who work day and night putting the slides together and making sure things are in order. And those who search, search the internet for correct images that would help you to focus. Oh, yes, we give thanks to God for all the gifts and talents that we as a church are pregnant. And we are in an Advent season where we are ready and looking and seeking and searching. We're in transition. Transition time is not always a comfortable time. It's not always a time when you know that you're okay. Sometimes you just want the next thing to come. But in this time of Advent, in this time, it's time to prepare. Get ready for your rector. Get ready. You're not yet ready, but the time will come when you are. Spend this time taking a look at what you're giving, taking a look at the time and your talents, what Christ has given you to minister to the world. Take a look around you at those who are already working and Add your gift and talent to that. Take a look at yourself, your inner spirituality, and say, am I one of the 12? Am I one that Jesus says when he says, he will send the Son of Man, will send his angels to the clouds and to the four winds and select his own? Are you one of his own who are working diligently, who understand that this light is only a preparation for what is to come. People get ready. Strive. This is the time. And so, hope. Advent, by definition, includes four words. One, beginning. This is the beginning of a new year. This is the beginning of a new season. This is the beginning of the new time. This is the beginning of a, a new hope in you, a new life in Christ Jesus. This is the beginning. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. E, so we have B, and we have E, the emergence that you, whatever is inside, laying dormant, must emerge. That spirit of hope, that spirit of God, that spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, let it shine forth as that first candle. It only takes one candle in the dark to dispel darkness. And then the S, start. Start a new practice. Start a new closeness. Start a new morning worship. Start a new morning prayer in your home. Start a new corner in the house where everyone feels like this is a place of holiness. Start a new interaction where a brand new additional love is shown. Start something new. And then T, we have B, beginning. We have E, emergence. We have S, start. And we have T, Trust in the Lord. B-E-S-T. Give God your very best. Christ is coming. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen.
judge and our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe. Please be seated. This is just a reminder for those of you who come regularly and for those of you who listen regularly outside in the cars and also for those at home. Uh, for those in the cars, we're inviting you to put on your mask uh, and then roll down your window after the peace and a lay Eucharistic minister will come to give you host. You have only to indicate how many, one, two, or three in the car, however many in the car are taking communion. You extend your hands palm up and the host will be placed inside. The hosts are already consecrated, as you know, and are already blessed. And so you hold them and wait, wait until all of us together have heard the words the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And then, and then together, we will have communion. At that time, you may consume the host. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
So nice to see everybody out here this beautiful Sunday morning. We have regathered. For all those of you at home, if you want to join us here in the sanctuary, our sanctuary has been prepared for you. Please call us at the office so we can make a reservation for you so you can be safely seated. However, we have a huge church, so if you come, we can also seat you safely. For those of you that are worshiping with us in your cars, now that it's cooler, feel free to wind down your windows, turn off your engine and enjoy. If somebody approaches your car, well, then we ask you to replace your mask. At this time, if you can, please remember to send in your tithes. If you're in the service, the collection plates are up front. If you're at home, please mail them to us or drop them off in our Dropbox or donate online. Right after service this morning, we will have our Zoom coffee hour become our Sunday favorite at 11 a.m. Today it's being hosted by Virginia Jimenez, who we all know, part of our tech team extraordinaire. She's a life coach, and if you've been on any of her Zoom coffee hours, you know about her spirit, how it feeds your soul. So join on, you will not be disappointed. We've lost several people this week, family. We would like to extend our condolences to the families of first or musical director Michael, who lost his 22-year-old nephew on Thanksgiving morning in Orlando. We know that that pain is unimaginable. We'd also like to remember the family of Nelly Garcia, who lost her mom Violet Campbell in Jamaica on 11:20. She had recently celebrated her 100th birthday. May God comfort these families and may the soul of Violet and Caleb rest in peace and rise in glory. Tomorrow evening, we will also be celebrating the life of Selassie Francis, our dear sister Gwen's husband, 6 p.m. here at Holy Sacrament. You can join the family and watch online. The links will be sent out in the e-blast today. Last week we had our Stewardship Sunday and our Harvest Sunday. We're asking for you please to return your pledges online. There's a pledge card in the e-blast so that we can know what our congregation is going to do for the next year. It's very important in our budgeting. So please fill out the pledge card online. We would love if you could do that by tomorrow. Um, if not, please get it in this week because we are trying to prepare our budgets for next year. Anybody who doesn't want to do it online, no problem. Just call the church office and let them know what your pledge will be for next year. This is a time of year where we're also asking for those of you who can, and we know what's happening out there, but if you can, if you could contribute to our deficit reduction. I think anybody who's been a member here over the past few years knows that we've been in a deficit for several, several years and just kind of rolling one year into the other into the other. This year has been an especially strange year for us with the church being closed for most of the year. Um, we've been very fiscally tight as best as we can um, and we'll be sending out those quarterly statements for the congregants to review as we have been doing. But we ask in this month of December, if you can, to make a special donation for deficit reduction. You can use it as part of your tax write-up, obviously up till December 31st. So we used to have envelopes in the pews, but obviously since that's not happening, um, you could again, mail it, drop it off, um, donate online and just indicate that it's for the deficit reduction. On to happier things. We're gonna have our virtual Christmas concert here with RT5, we're so excited. It's gonna be held on December 19th at 5 p.m. from your bed. Zoom, tickets are only $10. Great Christmas gifts for people this year. You know, I don't know who, how many of you were out there in the stores over the weekend, but this is much easier, much better, inspire somebody's soul. You can purchase them at holysacrament.org. 
Any troubles, just call our church office. We thank the altar guild for just how incredibly beautiful the church is this morning. Flowers on the altar today were given by Earl Moore. Celebrate the anniversary of his wife's passing, Hope Moore. Celebrate her life. This is a time of year where we need to re-elect the new vestry to move the church forward. For any new people that are interested in serving or you know people that you think would be great to serve, everybody should have already submitted the nominations, but you can still find the forms on the e-blast. We need the biographies by November 13th. There are four members coming off the vestry. They are eligible for re-election, but if there's new people that also want to serve, please send it in to us. Mark in your calendars our annual meeting, January 31st. Obviously, so much work to be done here in this church. So put that in your calendars and more to come on that. For our COVID update, these are difficult times. As of November 27th, there were 820 new cases in Broward County. Broward County is pretty much holding, holding high, but kind of steady. Slight decrease in the positivity rate this week. Um, COVID's out there, you guys know what to do. Get your flu shot also. Pray for each other, be careful as we enter into this holiday season. Have a blessed week, family. Ascribe to the Lord, the honor do his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Oh, baby. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation and in the calling of Israel to be your people, in the word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate of the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, You've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit and in the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will 
be done, be done on, on earth, earth as it, as is, it in is in heaven. Give, Give us, us this day this our, day daily, our bread. daily bread. And forgive and us, us our, our trespasses, trespasses as we, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. Against us. And lead, and lead us, us not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine, For thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and, the and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God. Pray. We thank, thank you, you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious, precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And no Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Birthday and anniversary blessings. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them if they are discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall and in their heart. May your peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Anniversary blessings. Loving Father, we thank you for couples who are celebrating the anniversary of their marriages this week. We give you thanks, Lord, for joining them together in a holy matrimony. Should they hurt each other, may they seek each other's forgiveness and yours. May their home be a haven of love, joy, peace, and harmony. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, 
May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.